A major difference with V2 is that it is no longer based on UML. It is based on a new foundational technology called the kernel modeling language um, that not only provides a basis of specific language constructs, but also a common meaning or semantics for those constructs um, that allows SysML v2 to build the system engineering capability in a way that's very extensible. We have uh, a textual notation in addition to a graphical notation, and they're complementary renderings of the same underlying model. So you can go back and forth, if you choose, between the textual and graphical notation, and we're finding that to be very, very powerful. So System v 2 is a much more expressive and a precise language where you can model different parts of the system and with much more precision, much more depth as you design the system from its concept phases to its detailed design. There are certain core patterns that are harmonized in the language, which makes it very easy to pick up for a newbie um, versus V1. Uh, and for the first time, a SysML standard has a standard API, which makes it possible to get data out of the model through a common API and build digital threads and digital twins. Some of the uh, features in SysML v2 uh, that we are looking forward to, uh, one of which is the concept of time slice and snapshots. Uh, it's very useful for a modeling uh, system you know, throughout the, uh, the life of, uh, of a um, component, for example. And with SysML v1, it was very difficult for us to use our technology to prove the correctness of a system. But due to the formal semantics around SysML v2, we can actually use our technology to prove properties and actually reason about a system and answer questions to ultimately help system designers design better systems more quickly. And the promise of SysML v2 is that extensibility, that ability to use the built-in API to connect to other tools. And I think V2 is going to open up the marketplace. You'll see a lot more tool vendors, so it'll become much easier for the end users to try out new capabilities in the modeling language. Really, it can bring practice into the next level. That gives the practitioners so many tools and the capabilities that they can actually uh, develop the next generation system architecture, model-based system designs, with ever more complex systems. You need a transition plan to go from V1 to V2. So if you have an existing improvement teams that are responsible for improving your system engineering processes, you leverage them and they can start by basically assessing the impact of System LV2 on their practices. And they can do that by starting pilot projects, for example, and learning from that. Once they understand those potential impacts, then they can lay out an incremental plan to start updating their practices. They should also start working with their tool vendors and communicating their, their needs and uh, coordinating with them on their roadmaps and things of that sort. But in the end, we covered 90% of what people had asked for, which for a large language and a large effort was actually pretty good. I commend OMG in leading this initiative, I think it's going to have a profound impact for the MBSE adoption in the industry.